Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. And this is question number three from the International A-Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P2 October 2022 paper. Um, and question number three here is about sequences. And here we're given a, um, a sequence, A1, A2, A3, and so on, is defined by this formula here, A n equals cosine squared n pi over 3. And we got to find the exact values of A1, A2, and A3. Now, first thing we need to realize here is um, the cosine, what this, is, what this means. Cosine squared of theta actually means cosine of theta all squared. All right. So what this actually means practically is the cosine of n pi over 3 and all of that squared. That's what it means. Okay, and the second thing we need to realize is the fact that they gave us the angle in terms of pi. So our calculators must be in radian mode. The calculators must be in radian mode. So that's the first couple of things we have to take note of. So if we check our calculators, in this case, my calculator is in degree mode. So I need to change it to radian mode before I use these values if I'm going to use my calculator. So I've got to press setup. So shift and then this button setup, angle unit, and then I'm going to choose radians, which is number two, and that's now in radian mode. Okay, so now for part A, A part one, we've got to find what A1 is. Now, A1 is equal to the value you get from this expression when you replace n with one. Okay, so we're going to have, I'll write it in this form here, the cosine of now one times pi, which is pi over three, and that has to be squared. Now, the cosine of pi over three is the cosine of 60, which is a half. And a half squared is a quarter. All right. And for part two, when a2 is when n equals 2. Okay, so I'm going to put 2 instead of n. So that will be 2 pi over 3. So that's the cosine of 2 pi over 3. And that's all squared. Now that's, a, that's like 120 degrees. So that's going to be minus a half. So you're going to have minus a half squared, which is going to be also a quarter. And then for part three, it says when a you're going to find a three. Well, that's when n equals three this time. So we're going to have the cosine of instead of two pi over three, you're going to have three pi over three, which is pi. So the cosine of pi all squared. Now the cosine of pi is negative one. So this is negative 1 squared, which gives you 1. So you have a quarter, a quarter, and 1. So you have the values of a1, a2, and a3 in this. Now, if you're not comfortable doing what I did, if you want to use your calculator, that's fine. You can set it up like this. So I have, the way I would set it up would be I'd put a bracket first, then I'd put cosine, and then I would put um, pi over 3, so I have my fraction, and then I'm going to put pi and over 3, and then I'm going to close this bracket, then close the whole bracket and then put squared. Okay, that's going to square whatever's inside here. And that gives me, as we can see, a quarter. And then I can change this to two pi, just put a two in front of it and press equals. And again, we see we get a quarter. That's minus a half squared, gives you a quarter. And then you're gonna have three pi over three, which we know is, is gonna be pi, but I can even leave it like this if you want. And you can see you're gonna get a one. So a quarter, quarter, one. All right, so this is the first three terms of this particular sequence. And most of these trick um, sequences, you realize you're going to end up with what's called a periodic um, sequence, where it's going, the, the numbers are going to repeat. So you can imagine if I, if I put, for example, 4 pi over 3, if I continue on, um, we don't have to do that here. But if I do, you'll notice what happens. It goes back to a quarter again. And if I put 5 pi over 3, you get another quarter. And I've put 6 pi over 3, but that's 2 pi. I know that's going to give me 1. Okay, so if I put 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi, cosine of 360, that's 1. So I know it's going to be 1 again. So you can see the sequence is just going to keep repeating. A quarter, a quarter, 1. A quarter, a quarter, 1. A quarter, a quarter, 1. And so on. Right, but they only asked us to write down the first three. So we're done there. But anytime you see these trig kind of sequences, you should realize that they repeat because the trig functions repeat yeah, the periodic function. So this is a periodic sequence. It has an order of three because it repeats every three terms. All right, now part B. Now part B says hence. Hence means using our answer for part A. 
find the exact value of this sequence, of this uh, sum, of this. This is, this is basically something which is called sigma notation. Now, sigma notation, I mean, this, this is like the Greek symbol sigma, the capital symbol sigma. And this basically means the sum of, from n equals 1 up to 50, of all the terms that you generate from this sequence when you replace n with 1, and then you add to that when n is 2, and you add to that when n is 3, and so on. So if you were to write out this sequence, okay, you would have something like this. You're going to have, this is going to be n plus cosine squared n pi over 3, okay, all of that. If you were to write out this, this sequence, you're going to have basically the first term is going to be 1, okay, plus, and as we saw, it was a quarter. Okay, and then the next term is going to be 2, because when n equals 2, that's going to be 2, plus, and we know when n equals 2 here, that's a quarter. And then you're going to have 3 plus 1. The third term is, is 1. And then you're going to have 4 plus a quarter. And then you're going to have 5 plus a quarter. And then you're going to have plus 6 plus 1. And so on. It's going to continue on like this. Now, this sequence is not an arithmetic sequence, neither is it a geometric sequence, because it's a mixture between an arithmetic sequence and a periodic sequence, right? So we can't use uh, some of the formula like Sn, okay? Like the sum of the first n terms um, is n over 2 times a plus l for the sequence as a whole. Or I can't use the arithmetic or the geometric series sequences. This is neither geometric nor arithmetic if we take it as a whole. All right, so there's a number of strategies we could use, okay? We could actually think of it as two separate sequences that are added together. So I could split it up into one sequence, which is the sum from n equals 1 to 50 of n, plus the sum from n equals 1 to 50 of cosine squared of n uh, pi over 3. I can think of it as these two separate sequences, all right? And for the first sequence, this is now arithmetic sequence. So if I take the first sequence, I can use the formula Sn equals n over 2 times a plus l. Why? Because this is an arithmetic sequence. If I just take this first part, so I'll take this part on its own, and I'll find the sum of the, these numbers from n equals 1 to 50. If you generate the sequence, the, the sequence for this is going to be 1 plus 2, when n equals 2, you're going to have 2, plus 3, plus, you're going to continue on up to, the last term will be 50. And this is a nice, easy, easy sequence to use, or formula to use. You can also use n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d. That's a sum of the arithmetic sequence. But this is way easier to use, if you, especially if you know the last term, which we know. We know the first term is 1, and the last term is 50, and we know the number of terms is 50. Okay, so we can say that the sum of the 50 terms of this part of the sequence is n over 2, which is 50 over 2, times the first term plus the last term. Okay, so that's going to give us 25 times 51. So we do 25 multiplied by 51, which gives us 1,275. So the sum of the first 50 terms for this is 1,000, what was it, 275. Okay, so that's that part done. Now we can look at the other part, which is this part that we've, we've uh, kind of determined is a periodic sequence that repeats. So we're looking for the sum of the first 50 terms of the sequence cosine squared of n pi over 3. And we mentioned that the first term is a quarter and the second term is a quarter. Okay, and the third term is 1. And then it repeats a quarter a quarter, and one, and so on, all right? And we've got to find up to the 50th term. That's the first term. Now, we know that there's going to be a certain number of ones in this sequence and a certain number of quarters. There's only two numbers that are going to be there, right? So what we could do is we could say, okay, let's work out that we see that every third term is a one. Um, so the first term, the third term, the sixth term. So you can say that the value of n, okay, um, 
every multiple of three in the values of, of, of n, okay, the third term, the sixth term, not the first, third term, the sixth term, the ninth term, they're all going to be ones, okay? So the last multiple of three up to 50 is 48. So the 48th term is going to be a one, the 49th term is going to be a quarter, and the 50th term is going to be a quarter. So if we think about it, we're going to have um, all together one, one, one. There's going to be 16 ones. You can think about it like that if you want to. You can say there's 16 ones. So if you add up all those ones, you're going to get 16 times one. Plus, and the remainder of the numbers, which is 50 minus 16. Okay, how many, how many numbers is that? That's going to be 34 numbers. Okay, 50 minus 16. Okay, if you do 50 minus 16, that's 34. So the rest of the numbers are all quarters. So 34 times a quarter. And that will give us the sum of, of these terms. Okay, so as we, as we mentioned this, you know, all the multiples, all the, the numbers in the places of the multiples of 3 in terms of the, the, the positions, 3, 6, 9, up to 48, which is the last multiple of 3, is going to be, they're all going to be um, the number 1. And so there's going to be 16 of those. Okay, because you have uh, 48 divided by 3, 16. And then the rest of the numbers are going to be quarters. So the rest of the numbers, there's 34 numbers left over out of 50, so that's 34. So let's see what that gives us. You're going to have 30, you're going to have 16 times 1 plus 34 times a quarter. And that should give us answer 49 over 2. So therefore we can say that the total sum of everything that we were looking for from n equals 1 to 50 of our sequence n plus cosine squared of n pi over 3 okay is going to be 1275 plus 49 over 2 so we add that to 1275 and that should give us 2599 over 2 2000 599 over 2 it says give the exact value so we can leave it like that okay we could also write it as point something point 0.5 as a decimal if you wanted to and that's the answer to this question okay that's the answer to this question so um yeah so we could write it as if you want to 1299.5 but that's fine to leave it like this now some students um i noticed even when i was teaching this topic all right, they from the beginning of doing this topic, um, some of them were not bothered to listen to what was going on in class. This is what I, I noticed, all right, because of the button they saw here in the calculator. And they thought that, oh, you know, what's the point of going through all that hassle when I can just type this into my calculator and get the answer? All right, so let's show you this button is actually a very useful button, right. And it's useful because if we don't know what the answer is, we can we can use it to help us to find what the answer is, to to check that we've done the right answer, the, the right thing. So I'm going to put here instead of n, I'm put x because that's the value that you put into this. So I'll put x plus cosine of x times pi over three. So I'm going to put x times pi over three. Okay, and um, that is. Okay, the angle. Now I, got, I need to square this. I need to square. I need to put. Um, I need to square all of this. I'll put another bracket and I'll square it. Okay, so that's going to be um, the square of that. Okay, so x. That's the open a bracket, a second bracket, a third bracket. One, two, three. That should be okay. All right, and I've got to put now the values of of x, which is like our n values from one up to fifty. Okay, so you put this in your calculator and you get exactly the same answer that we got, right? Now, the issue that I had with these students is that if you don't know how to do these questions and you just, or you know, you don't, know, you don't understand the method that we use and you didn't show any method at all and you just wrote down the answer, just literally just wrote down the answer by putting this in your calculator, then the following statement, which is in bold, in the marking scheme for the examiner, will apply to you. So it says notice or note, sorry, that a method mark must be seen in part B as stated in the question. Okay, you must make your method clear. All right, 
Correct answer only of 2,599 over two scores, no marks. So you will lose all four marks with this question if you just wrote this down. Okay, you have to show what method you used in order to solve the question. So this button that some students were so, uh, you know, they thought they were so smart using, right, in, in class, and they would not bother to show any steps whatsoever in the, in the classwork, is actually going to cost you all the marks for this question if you just use the button alone. Now, the smart student, the, 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 the student who has, you know, his brains about him and wants to get full marks, what he's going to do is he's going to, sh he's going to understand how to do this. So he's not going to be just relying on this button the whole time that we're learning the topic. No, he's going to know how to do this. But he's going to use this button or this calculator function here as a way of checking his answer in the final exam. So once you got your answer, after you showed your steps, you can use this button all right, in order to check your answer. And you can then rest assured that you've done the right thing and you haven't made a silly mistake. If your answer comes out different to what this gives you and you've set this up correctly, then you know that there's some way where you've misunderstood something, you've written something down wrong, you've calculated something incorrectly. You can go back and then check to see where your mistake is. But don't think that you can get away with just writing the answer down um, in these type of questions. The, the examiners, are not, you know, they know about these functions on the calculators and that's the reason why they have these statements in the mark scheme. Right, so that's something really important for you guys to understand. All right, so um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will be appearing in this region here. Other questions from the topic of sequences and series from P2 in this um, section over here. You'll find a playlist and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.